Okay, hey guys, I know it's early, um, there's usually a high demand for this, um, in the weather industry, just because of the fact that winter's a big, fa uh, factor of weather, I mean, it's those, pretty much the season people are most worried about, oh my gosh, how much snow am I gonna eat, even though I can't go over that until, I mean, if, even, December 20-something, I mean, right before winter, is maybe when you can try to estimate that, not, not in May, not in late May, but what I can talk about is what would happen if the ENSO predictions are right right now. Can't go over NAO, can't go over AO, can't go over PNA, can only go over ENSO. That's the only thing that we can pretty much predict right now, okay? So basically what we're looking at is the, there's the highest chance for a weak El Nino setup, and we'll, we'll go over that later, so, um, sorry about that. Um, so, basically, this is the setup. Jetstream, maybe, uh, coming into Montana, um, definitely North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, you know. Going up to where the northeast, mid, northern mid-Atlantic, New England, get lots of snowstorms. Uh, mixed events for southern Virginia, North Carolina, northern South Carolina, mixed events. Very common. Um, then mostly rain events in these zones. Unless it's mountains, of course. Um, this is basically going to be the number one storm track, which we'll go over right after this. That goes right over here. Sea surface on the anomalies happens with happens with hurricanes too. Warmer waters equals bigger storm. I mean, it, that's the basics. Um, feeds off the warm water. The warmer waters just intensify the storm, just like a hurricane. Same thing with a nor'easter. Now, the reason that um, an El Nino has uh, nor nor'easters very commonly, it's because the winds are heading to the east in the Pacific Ocean, and also very wet weather over there. So in general, that's going to cause a lot of systems to come from here. Sometimes they can come from more southerly, but it's more more common to come from here. Also more, you know, if you like snow, you're going to like this upcoming winter, most likely, uh, if not warm. New England, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. In general, it's going to be our winter this year again. Um, usually, three winters in a row will be our winter. Then the West Coast will have a couple. Then us, you know. It doesn't. It's not usually like one winter can make a difference, but it can. Two most common storm tracks, possibly the Clipper, but Nor'easters definitely going to be the most common, this, well not definitely, but there's definitely the biggest chance for Nor'easter being the biggest threat. Alberta Clipper right now, I can't say for other storms, right now I'm seeing the threat for Nor'easters and maybe a few Alberta Clippers. Anything else I haven't really, I, I mean like I said, this is going to change. Nor'easter, it's looking likely like we're going to see a few, very likely. Okay. And they can go from here, they can go inland, therefore the coast wouldn't get a lot of snow. But they could go out, preferably right in the middle. Which is also most common. No, it would be nor'easter here, can come from Alberta Clippers, come out, pretty much. Let's check out the, um, and so... In general, east central regions of the Enzo will warm up, making the El Nino of 2014 a moderate El Nino, most likely. Now, this is T def anom anomalies, which basically we're looking. This is deep, this is shallow, and the uh, Pacific. And I put a line here, so that's basically this square. That's right about there. Except it's looking straight that way. Okay, so, in this, um, 
in this circle. Um, that's basically where we're going to see this warm up. This right here is going to be like right here. This right here is going to be right here. So we'll see the warmest waters in here. Um, so let's check out the Plume of Battles. Mid-April. I couldn't find the mid-May, so we're just going to do this. Okay. The black line's my prediction. Let's take a look at the January. Looks like, if I'm correct, that's them right. Let's see. This is them right here. Okay. No, that's the NASA. This is them right here. Okay. Let's see, this is the CFS, bringing us into a strong El Nino, pretty much. This weak El Nino, 0.5 to 1, and the 5, moderate, anything above that's a strong. So I think we'll definitely get into a moderate El Nino for summer and fall months, but then really go down as they towards December. We'll really see that decrease. Check out the JMA uh, sea surface temperatures. As you can see, they have a slight, this is for winter by the way, December, January, February. They have a weak to moderate El Nino. I totally agree. Let's see the precipitation. Now as you can see, they trend to agree with my precipitation. For right now, and this isn't a forecast, guys. If I was forecasting right now, you don't know how much I'd get bashed if I was forecasting right now. This is not a forecast. In general, everybody can agree that they're thinking about winter and they're thinking about what it's going to be like. Nobody's not thinking about what it, the possible income or outcomes could be. So, really, what I'm doing is I'm just sharing with you guys my thoughts right now. Things will change, definitely, but. It's going to give you an idea, and most a lot of this stuff will probably happen, but a lot of it probably won't at the same time. So, as you can see, they agree with the nor'easter track, which is very common in weak El Nino's. Uh, um, so, basically, I hear they disagree with the Clippers. I see it more common than any other track besides the nor'easter. Uh, so basically, it comes right here, you see the southeast. They want to take it out to sea as soon as it gets over here. They don't want it over here for some reason, but I think it could go up the coast more like this. Let's check out their, um, their surface temperatures, air surface temperatures. As you can see, they have a nice ridge in the east. We really want to look for trends here. Um, basically, trends is with weather is the same thing as it would be with I don't know. What can I really do to the general public? I don't know. Financial trends. I have no clue what I've related to. But what we want to look for is to see this stick around. If this cold in the east sticks around, that's it becoming more likely, pretty much. Just like when you're looking at model forecasts. If you see it for one run, pretty much means no, nothing, almost nothing. See it for two runs, two to four runs, it's getting pretty serious. Anything above that, it's getting likely. So, it's depending on how far away it is, obviously. This In this hashed area, I don't know what you'd call it, um, you can see that the coldest compared to average is actually in the southeast. That's also pretty common with the weak El Ninos. And you can see some pretty good Greenland blocking here. Um, pretty good. But like I said, I'm loving this ridge in the west. And if they, we had a ridge like this, so we definitely keep a very organized trough in the east. A little bit like what we saw last year. Only a little bit. Let's check out the basically AccuWeather's map of what a um, Anino is usually like. General. The jet stream goes up here. Nice. That's a nice ridge right there. And troughs down into the east. And then they have the um, the low pressure systems right here. Usually they'll head south and go into here. 
a little bit more and then go up depends what the trough does if the trough goes north the system will go up if it goes like this more snow for these areas because of the fact that it's going to be there longer if it was going up the coast it would go way faster if it goes here it has time to get there and then go this way it's not just going to go in one general direction when it turns it slows down it's just how things work so me Pretty much, it's looking like we're going to see some uh, drought relief in California, which is very thankful. Hopefully, it doesn't happen too fast. We can actually, hopefully, not see a lot of landslides out there. Because I know it's a possibility if we if we get a lot of rain right after the trough. So, hopefully, that El Nino doesn't come in too fast. Um, but, yeah, really what we're going to want to look for in the fall time is September... October, November, seeing the occasional nor'easter. You see that, that's what we saw last year, and that's what gave me a sign that there's a good chance for nor'easters this winter. See them in the fall time, and the fall time looks a lot like the winter time. There's a good chance you'll see some winter time nor'easters, and was I right? Yes, I was right. We saw three or four nor'easters in the winter time, and about three, two or three in the fall time, so... Yeah, that's a good way of going about things. Thanks for watching, guys. This is uh, my time to go. And uh, basically, yeah, thanks for watching. This has been a Winter Hints episode. Maybe, I don't know, Winter Hints. It's a good word. <sighs> winter Hints. Yeah, that's probably what I'll call it. Hints at Winter. Because Hints is a small word. Hints isn't. Is the, not like a forecast. I'm just giving you guys small hints, or I'm um, seeing small hints of what the winter can be like. So yeah, that's what I'll call it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys later. Please subscribe if you want uh, to see my more winter hint episodes. Um, yep, yeah, thanks for 5,000 views and 50 subscribers. I appreciate it. See you guys.